Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our story is entitled, My Roommate Ruth. This is the story of Sergeant Ruth Bailey, who saw the world from Paris to the pyramids, and she went the whole way first class, private first class of the Women's Army Corps. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, here's a very important word to the young women of America, and that word is opportunity. Consider the great opportunity that is open to you, the opportunity to serve your country and yourself as a member of the Women's Army Corps. You'll find that in the Army, there are over 300 kinds of jobs that you can fill. And your Army has the best technical training schools in the world to teach you how to do them. Because the Women's Army Corps is a fast-growing organization, your chances for advancement and promotion are wide open. And for those of you with ambition, and who can, of course, meet the high standards, there's the opportunity to attend OCS and become a commissioned officer. Yes, ma'am. No matter how you slice it, opportunity is waiting for you at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Drop in today and get full details. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, My Roommate Ruth. <laughs> Have you ever gone into one of those old-fashioned general stores and read the sign? If you don't see what you want, ask for it. Well, my roommate Ruth must have swallowed a sign like that when she was a little girl back in Antlers, Oklahoma. Because no matter where she went in the Women's Army Corps, which means just about everywhere, she'd ask the darndest people for the darndest things. Nine times out of ten, she got what she asked for, too. The tenth time, she got more than she bargained for. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of my story. Just to show you what I mean about Ruth, let me tell you about the time we were in Manila. It was just before VJ Day. Now, come to think of it, the first thing Ruth ever said to me was to ask me for something. Uh, yeah. You got a tie I could borrow, honey. Mm, uh, what'd you say? You got an extra tie? Oh, sure, help yourself. Uh, just don't take the new one, though. I'm saving it. You uh, just ship in with that gang from New Guinea yesterday? That's us. My name's Ruth Bailey. Hi, I'm Dottie Jones. Welcome to Camp Carefree in the land of perpetual sunshine. <laughs> uh, where do you hail from, Ruth? Antlers, Oklahoma. Antlers? Yeah, Antlers. Oh, go ahead, say it. Uh, say what? You're an Antlers girl. Doesn't that make you a real deer? Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> hey, if you're going to chow, I'll go along with you. Wait up. Oh, say... Aren't you awful dolled up just for the mess hall? Oh, I got a pass. I'm going to Manila. In this heat? What for? Oh, you know, see the sights, buy some souvenirs. There is an old civilian proverb. Don't you know there's a war on? I ought to. So? So, don't expect too much from Manila. It's not exactly tidied up yet. Thanks for the tip, but I think I'll take a look anyway. When a girl rides the range in Oklahoma, she doesn't mind a little dust and heat. I don't have much to do this afternoon. Uh, you mind if I tag along? Heck no, honey, but what about the dust and heat? You ever been in a subway, young lady? No. Why? Well, I'll tell you. When a girl rides the subway in New York, she don't mind a little heat and dust either. Oh, hey. Ruth, let's stop for a minute under this tree. Gee, honey, if we keep stopping like this, we're not going to see anything. Uh, I hadn't noticed much left to see. Golly, Ruth, do you have to stop and talk to everybody? Well, sure. Isn't that what we came to town for? Oh, it's so hot. To... Hey, Ruth, you know what occurred to me? What? 
you go ahead and see whatever you want, and I'll stay right here and wait for you. By yourself? Sure. I'll have a perfectly wonderful time. I'll take off my shoes. Well, if you really don't mind, there is the governor's palace I'd like to see. I really don't mind. Uh, I'll be over there sitting on that bench, and you can tell me all about it. And so I sat and sat and sat, sat some more. And finally, just as the sun was setting into Manila Bay and the evening breeze was rising, not to mention my temper, Ruth finally turned up. Well, it's about time. Guess I'm a little late, huh? Are you kidding? I have been sitting here on this bench for three solid hours. Where were you? Well, if you must know, I was having lunch. You were ha... And I was starving to death all by myself. I know I should have included you on the invite, honey, but he wanted me to come up right away. He? Uh-huh. I should have known there was a man in this somewhere. How did this happen? Well, I called up, and his secretary said... Hey, you called a guy up? Ruth Bailey, you ought to be ashamed. Why? I was only asking for the visiting hours. A visiting hours? You mean this joker's that popular? Now, Dorothy, you mustn't talk that way. After all, he is the president. Uh, who is the president? If you'd only listen to me, honey. The man I had lunch with, he's the president of the Philippines. You mean to stand... You had... The president. Ruth, how could you do a thing like that? Gee, honey, what else could I do? I already had my breakfast. Well, it was true, all right. Ruth had eaten lunch that day with the president of the Philippine Republic. <laughs> After that, you couldn't pry me away from her. I figured that if I joined up with a girl like that, we'd really go places. Uh, we did, all right. From the Philippines to Hawaii, across the Pacific, through the Canal Zone, a brief stop at Fort Dix, New Jersey, across the Atlantic to Bremerhaven, and when we finally dropped our barracks bags, it was in the Hotel Metropole, Vienna. Vienna. Oh, isn't this some view? Look, the Danube over there. Yeah. A and did you get a load of that lobby as we came in? Crystal chandeliers, all that gilt on the ceiling. Marble floors yet. And look at this room we've got to ourselves, will you? Rugs, curtains, feather beds. Home was never like this. Cora's sure doing well by us. Um, what do you think this bell pull is for? One way to find out. Ruth! You didn't ring it. PSC Bailey. First sergeant wants you right away in the orderly room. Okay, Corporal, be right with you. I could have sworn the rope was disconnected. <laughs> Well, Bailey, all ready to go? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready to go. Mm, I see by your records that you're classified as a clerk typist. What's your typing speed? Well, let's see now, Sergeant, ma'am. Oh, about 60 words a minute. Mm, 60 words a minute. That's fine, Bailey. How would you like to be the secretary to a general? Just like that? Why, golly, I'd love to make a try at it. Mm, the general secretary is going home on points, and he needs one right away. Report to General Key's office at 0900 tomorrow morning. That's all. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, uh, Private Bailey. Yes, Sergeant? I notice you've accumulated 60 days of leave during your Pacific tour of duty. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Well, outside of Manila, there just wasn't any place much to spend it in. One coconut tree is pretty much like another. <laughs> I imagine it must be. Well, you'll find plenty to see over here. Let me know when you want to begin using up some of that leave time. Don't worry, Sarge. I will. Mention mail. Post office mail, honey, not the species. So slow down to a walk. Here we go, girls. I'm Brewster. Here. Yeah. Oh. Bachelor, here's a stack of magazines for you. Pass them back. Oh, goody, Vogue's at last. Yeah, Mary. Now you'll know what the other smart women are wearing. <laughs> Bailey, here I am, over this way. Uh, what have you got, Ruth? Letter from home? Yeah. Well, what do you know? One from Dad. He usually leaves the writing up to Mom. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dear daughter Ruth, we are all well here at home. 
You remember the Session family that I grew up with back in the old country? Their boy, Harold, you met the summer we all came to New York. He was over singing with the Vienna Boys Choir. We haven't had a letter from them in five years. We have written many times, but never an answer. Here is the last address we have. Perhaps you could go there and make inquiries. And then he starts in on rent control. Oh, gee. Is that again? Oh. oh, right here. Package for you. Hey, Penny, looks like another chocolate cake from home. Yeah. It is. How can I stay on my diet when they keep sending me chocolate layer cake? <laughs> Mom knows I can't resist chocolate layer cake. Don't worry, Finny. We'll be glad uh... to keep you on your diet. Oh, it's all right <laughs> for you, Shirley. You can eat like a horse. You don't gain an ounce. It's not fair. <laughs> oh, gee, Ruth. Leave it to your family to hand you an assignment like that. Talk about a needle in a haystack. You really know the family he's talking about? Oh, sure I do. Golly, I'll never forget Harold. I must have been about eight years old that summer we came to New York and Mama slicked my sister Louise and me all up and we went to the music hall. I couldn't breathe. It was so big and so elegant. My, and I thought the bijou back in Antlers was rich looking. Yeah, know what you mean. Uh, but what's this got to do with Harold? Oh, I'm coming to that. And then the gold curtains went back. The whole orchestra came up out of the ground. Pit? Yeah, pit. And then there was Harold with his blonde hair curling over his choir boy collar, singing. Of course, there were a couple of hundred other boys singing, too, but I was sure I could hear him hit every note. I wonder if he's still a soprano. I hope not. And uh, that's all you saw of him? Oh, no, no. We spent the whole time together that we were in New York. Mom was glad to get rid of me for a couple of days. I remember he wanted me to teach him all the American slang words. And you did? Yeah. And Louise told Mama some of the words, too. Oh, I still hurt when I think about it. Do I remember, Harold? Well, um, when do we start? What? If you think you're going to leave this girl home while you're out manhunting, you've got another guest coming. Well, combine Ruth's enthusiasm with her indestructible arches... And you have some idea of the ground we covered looking for a trace of the Session family. We didn't even wait for Chow that night, but with a typewriter ink still fresh from our fingers, we flew out of headquarters. 48, 46, 40. There, Dorothy, that must be the house across the street. Mm, I'm with you. Beat away. This is it. Number 36, Langergrasse. Well, go on. Ring. Don't stampede me. I'm ringing. Uh, I think I hear somebody coming. Yeah. Uh, guten Tag, Frau. Pardon me, but we're looking for some folks named Session. They still live here? Huh? Session. Session. She's not deaf, Ruthie. She just doesn't understand English. Session. Nein. Nein, kein Session. See, she does understand English. How about it, ma'am? Do you know anybody by that name? Nine. Anybody who might have lived... Uh, guess the answer's nine. Well, what do we do now? <sighs> Mom used to say that there's only one thing to do when you want to know something, Dottie. You just ask. So, we started asking. And I want you to know there are an awful lot of people to ask in Vienna, even in the Allied zone. First, we asked everyone in the neighborhood. The answer was always, Session? Nein. And then we went around to all the police districts. The answer was always, Nein, Fräulein. No one named Session in this district. Finally, we even got to asking a couple of the Russian officers that used to come up to headquarters then. And as you might expect, the answer was always, Yet. Dorothy. Mm -hmm. You sleep? No. <sighs> Me either. What's the matter? Are you unhappy? Gee, I'm so discouraged. All this looking and not one clue. I don't know what to do. Me either. One more nine is going to put me right behind the eight ball. Hey, did you get that? Nine, eight. Cute, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> Nobody asked me, but you know what I'd do if I were you, Ruth? What? I'd give up this search. Oh, now, but... wait a minute. I don't mean for good. I mean just for a while before this business really gets you down. 
Why, even the mess sergeant stopped me and asked me if you were sick turning down steak and onions last night. She did? Why, that was right neighborly of her. Well, there's always one sure way to improve your appetite, like my mother used to tell me. Go someplace where you can't afford the prices. Meaning what? Meaning, now is the time for all good wax, like us, to go to Paris. Paris? Mm, why not? We have enough accrued leave, just think of it. The Champs-Élysées, shopping. The Rue de la Paix, shopping. The right bank, shopping. The you bank. know, the idea sounds better and better every time you mention shopping. <laughs> I thought you'd see it that way. And then if we have time, we can go to Switzerland, the Riviera. Or England, or go to Scotland. Right now, will you both go to bed? I don't know about you, but I've got to stand inspection tomorrow morning. <laughs> You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production of My Roommate Ruth. We'll return in just a moment. But first, you know it's a matter of opinion whether the WAC secretary is more efficient than the WAC radio operator. But it is a fact that the Women's Army Corps is the best solution to many a young gal's problem on how to get the most out of life. Yes, ma'am. Whether you specialize in cryptography or become a technician in an Army chemical lab, you'll be doing interesting work. And you'll be the pride of your family. What you do will be important to America. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station today. See what is offered for your benefit when you enlist in the Women's Army Corps. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of My Roommate Ruth. say we are now? I didn't say. Uh, what about your guidebook? What does that say? Well, according to this here map, we've been swimming in the Seine the last half hour. <laughs> Hold it a minute. Oh, monsieur? Uh, we've been there. Which way is to channel number five? <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> Utica was never like this. <sighs> Antlers either. Not nearly as much water. Gosh, I wish the folks could see me now. Little Ruthie riding down the Grand Canal in a gondola with a handsome gondolier. There's only one thing missing, you know. A date? Well, yes, but I meant a song. Aren't gondoliers supposed to be singing all the time? That's what the guidebook said. Say, gondolier. Gondololo. Say, buddy. Uh, uh, si, signorina. How about singing us a little music? Something real special? A uh, sure, very special song for the lady soldiers. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, monsieur, I sing. <laughs> oh, give me the home away, the buffalo. Oh, no! Since I hadn't spent as much time among the coconuts as Ruth had, I hadn't saved up quite as much furlough time. So it's only from hearsay that I know about her other jaunts. Like the time she got a yen to ride horseback in the middle of Stockholm, so she went up to a fatherly old man grooming his horse at a riding stable and asked him if she could take a ride. And he said, I think it can be arranged, my dear. And it turned out to be the king of Sweden. And then there was the time she wanted to take a bath on a train to Trieste. And oddly enough, there was a bathtub aboard. It wasn't until later she found out it had been Eva Braun's tub. That wasn't strange since it had been Mr. Hitler's private train. <laughs> I don't want to give you the idea that being in the whack in those days was just a ball, but uh, once in a while it was definitely a picnic. <laughs> hey, anybody remember to bring the mustard? Anybody right. seen the chocolate cake? Just look for Finney, you'll find it. <laughs> Bailey. Oh, her sister. She just came in last week. Yeah. Now she's living about two blocks away. That's real luck for you. Oh, I'll say. With my luck, my sister turned up in the same barracks. Oh. Sis, I can't believe it. Here, here the two of us going on a picnic together, just like we were back in Oklahoma. <laughs> and me a captain and you a cook. Yeah. But don't you pull your rank on me, Louise Bailey. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. I'm afraid you'll start calling me sir. Hey, come on, the two of you. You have plenty of time to yak later. I'm going to eat those hot dogs myself if you don't hurry up. Come on, Louise. She means it. Ruth, promise me you won't laugh if I tell you something. Sure, honey. What is it? You know, until the other day, I thought that the Vienna Woods was just a waltz that Strauss wrote. Remember the record we have of it at home? Here we are, eating hot dogs right in the middle of it. Yeah. 
I remember all right. I remember the day you broke it. <laughs> How did it go now? Da dum, da dum, da dum. Bump Dorothy, bump. what's that awful racket? Oh, it's just in the hometown boy now for a quiet afternoon. Anybody want to bet me 50 cents? They'll stop right here. You know something? I've always wanted to ride one of those gadgets. Ruth Bailey, don't you dare. You'll break your neck. Oh, I don't know. But I kind of feel silly to ask. Well, did I ever live to see the day when my roommate would hesitate to ask anybody for anything? Not yet, you haven't. Which one of you gents will change a ride for a hot dog? Okay, Mom. Hop on. Here. Hold my hat, Dorothy, while I take a spin up the strata. Oh, please. What would Mama say if she knew what you were doing? She won't say anything if you don't tell her. Come, James. Don't fall off of that. I won't. Nice weather for a picnic today, eh? Sure is. The way it rained last night, I thought the first sergeant was going to postpone it. I'm glad you didn't. Whee! What? I said, whee! Hang on. Say, are you an American? An American? No, why? Oh, I don't know, just the way you said hop on a while ago. Oh, that. No, I've just been around Americans a lot, I guess. But you sure talk like one. <gasps> Look! Look at that horse and buggy over there. Isn't that real cute? Watch it, Fraulein. You're leaning too far over to one side. Look out! <laughs> Corporal, Corporal, are you all right? Of course I'm not all right. What is it? Is it your leg, your arm? No, it's my skirt. Look at it, it's full of mud and it just came back from the... Oh, look at my shoe. Here, 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 let me help you. <sighs> now, sit down on this log. Here, here, I've got a handkerchief. Handkerchief, I need a bath towel. I knew I shouldn't have let you talk me into this. Talk you into it? What? <laughs> you were the one that... Hold still a minute. What? Hold still right there. Your face. My face? <laughs> it's just a little mud, probably. No, not mud. Just the way it looked for a minute, I... I don't know, it reminded me of someone. Are you often in the habit of examining young gentlemen's faces? Oh, be quiet. Come on, I'm as clean as I'm going to get. Let's get back. A bargain's a bargain. Okay, I'm starved. Hop on. Well, after ruining my afternoon, the least you could do is entertain me a little bit. Okay. What would you prefer, songs or jokes? After that last crack, maybe you better stick to singing. Okay. Vin, vin, do Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Thanks. You should have heard me before my voice changed. I used to be a soprano in the Vienna Boys Choir. No kidding. Say, you might be a big help to me. By any chance, did you know a boy in the choir about ten years ago named Harold Session? Harold Session? I... Are you little Ruthie? Oh, no! Harold! Little Ruthie! Hey, 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 stop, stop! Your arm! Look out! I can't look out. Your arm is in my face. Oh! Ah! <laughs> it to my roommate, Ruth. With her luck, she falls down in the mud and comes up with, let's face it, a husband. I was her bridesmaid, of course. She looked lovely in something old, something new, something borrowed, and something khaki. The something new was a sergeant's stripe. Leave it to the general to come through with a swell wedding present like that. Well, the team pretty much fell apart after that. And it wasn't long before I was transferred stateside. Did I ever see my roommate Ruth again? <laughs> I sure did. Yesterday. That's what made me think of the story in the first place. 
There I was, following my nose in the general direction of the whack mess hall, when I heard that familiar voice behind me. Daddy! What? Honey, is that you? I... Ruth! Ru... Well, I... How are just you? Just grand, honey, just grand. How long you been on Governor's well, I... Island? I, I just got in. I, I haven't even been assigned to my barracks yet. Hey, I'll talk to the CO. She's a pal of mine. Maybe you can get that bunk next to me. <laughs> Oh, it'll be just like old times. Come on. All right. Well, Ruthie, you know you haven't changed a bit? Not a bit? A couple of extra stripes. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Uh, maybe I shouldn't mention this, but, um... Uh, how's Harold? Fine. <laughs> well, uh, I I'd love seeing him. Me too. But he's in Europe. Oh, gee, what a shame, Ruthie. You mean he let a uniform come between you? I hope to tell you he did, honey. I got him over here, and what does he do? He goes and joins the U.S. Army. Tired of the same old office routine? Okay, gals. Now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. You can travel all over the world, meet new friends, see new places. And that's right. In the Women's Army Corps, you can escape the humdrum routine of your present life. Visit exciting places in this country, travel in Europe, cross the Blue Pacific, cruise through the Caribbean, make new friends among young men and women all over the world. You'll have plenty of leisure to enjoy those travels, too. Plus a 30-day paid vacation each year, plus many weekend passes and holidays. Why don't you join the WAC? Yes, indeed. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station today and talk it over with the friendly recruiting sergeant. Girls, believe me, you'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented and transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.